everybody. Thanks for joining me here today. This is Nicole with Topaz, and today we're going to talk about restoring old photographs and scanned in negatives using both Topaz products and Photoshop or Photoshop Elements. Today my host is Photoshop CS5. We're also going to be taking a look at uh, mostly Topaz Simplify and Topaz Adjust today to deal with heavy amounts of dust in your images and color casts that might come about when you're restoring your old photographs. So let's just go ahead and jump right in. I have several images here today that have some classic problems with them when you're dealing with old images. All of the images that I'm working with today were actually scanned in slides of my grandfather's from approximately anywhere from 30 to 40 years ago, close to 40 years ago, <laughs> and they were in storage for a very long time. They were well kept, but even when you have really well kept slides, dust settles into the emulsion of the negative and it's pretty difficult to try to get rid of before you scan. So you will see tons of dust afterwards. So this particular image that we're looking at has quite a few issues. I'm going to scroll in so we can actually see what those are. So as we get closer, you can see there is a huge dust problem uh, in the image. We also have some stains happening here, this large purple dot, uh, as well as some major scratches happening. Now, there are a couple suggestions I have if you are scanning in your old negatives and old photographs. Try to get, as ri try to get rid of as much dust as you possibly can beforehand. If you don't have an anti-static cloth, I would suggest that you get one. I don't know of any brands, I forget the brand names, but they're really awesome. You just gently brush that cloth over the negative or the picture and it helps for dust not to be able to settle back onto the picture immediately. So that really helps as you're going through the scanning process. Also to get some sort of blower or squeezed air that you can squeeze on there just to get some of the more difficult dust off of the image, but most likely the majority of the dust you are going to have to handle in your post-processing. So I've come up with a couple tricks with Simplify, Topaz Simplify, to deal with the dust. So the first thing we're going to talk about today is dust. I'm going to go to a different image, but let me show you this before and after real quick. So this is actually was a pretty difficult image in the sense that there was lots of things to deal with and I was able to quickly take the image from this original scan, dealt with the dust and the scratches in Topaz Simplify. Again, let me show you that before and after. And actually, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that I dealt with all of the dust and scratches with Topaz Simplify. We are going to be going over some useful tools that help with dust and scratches, such as the Clone Stamp tool and the Healing Brush tool within Photoshop. So that dealt with anything that Simplify was not able to do. Again, here's before and after. And then I took the resulting image into Adjust 5 to deal with the lack of color, the kind of the desaturation that happens over time, and was able to boost it back up very quickly just with a preset and bring it back in. So here's the before of the original image and after. That took about five to ten minutes because there were quite a few scratches, quite a few pieces of dust, but um, not very not very long considering the before and after. So let's take a look at a couple other before and afters that I did the other on Monday for the previous presentation. Just going to find them real quick. Sorry about that. Where did they go? Okay, here's the before and after. It's actually pretty extreme as well. Here's before. So we have some major dust happening, some scratches, and a, a distracting spot down here, and that's after. Using pretty much the same workflow, first simplify, and then taking the resulting image into adjust to work with colors. And any of the dust that I couldn't deal with in simplify, I deal with in, in Photoshop. Let's see here. So today we're going to actually be looking at this picture just for the first Simplify workflow example. Let me zoom in here. 
So as you come in, you can see how bad the dust really is. This is at 100% here. Tons of dust all over the edges that I wasn't able to get rid of in before the scanning process. Now, my scanner that I use is an Epson Perfection V700, and it actually has some dust removal in the software itself that helps out quite a bit. So if you have the option to work with a dust removal and you have the time that it takes to sit there for that, I'd say see if that helps as well. And many of these scanners, if you have the ability to scan in slides, will have some sort of color correction within the software as well. So keep an eye on that and see if that might help with some of the color cast that might be going on in your images. The first thing I'm going to do is make a background copy here. And I am going to take it directly into Topaz Simplify to handle as much dust as possible. And we'll take a look at some of the Photoshop tools. So here I go down to Filters, Topaz Simplify 3. If you're not familiar with any of the Topaz line of products, we're not going to be going into the introduction necessarily into the program, just the actual workflow that handles this particular situation. But just to give you a quick preview here, over here on the left is our uh, preset preview area where you can go through and select different presets and they'll be applied to your image. Here in the middle area is where you have your main viewing window where you can go back between your original and your preview. And then over on the right you have your preview navigator, all of your different zoom tools and your adjustment panel here on the the right with all of the different adjustments you can actually go in and make separate from just your presets. So Simplify is really well known for some of the artistic painterly type of effects that it can create such as this particular preset I just chose. However, today we're just going to be not really going into that painterly effect but going into the actual technology behind Simplify. Simplify will take out the smaller details of your image. So the first slider right here, the simplify size slider in our adjustment panel is the only slider we're going to be looking at today. And as you move this up, the smallest details in your image will start to disappear. And as you keep on moving up, that's how you start to get that painterly effect. So what we're, our goal is here today is not to create that painterly effect, but to be able to remove the dust and still keep it looking like a photograph. So let's go in one to one to look at this. I'm going to come over here into a really dusty area. And I'm just going to take my simplify size slider up to about 0.05. So immediately, here's before, here's after. A lot of that uh, small, small dust has disappeared. We still have some larger remnants of dust. And let me take a look at the actual photograph. It's still looking pretty photographic. It's not gone into an artistic uh, area yet. So I'm going to go back to this section. I'm going to continue working and see how far I can go before it starts to look too painterly. Okay, here's before. Here's after. It's now at point 0.1, which I have found to be a very good value to remove the majority of the dust. You might still have some large dust like we do here, uh, these larger pieces. But look how much we've removed just by doing the point 0.1 value. Here's before and here's after. Let's go back to fit and see if we're still looking like a photograph pretty well. And we removed most of the dust. So now I'm going to go into... I'm just going to press OK. And we're going to be processed back into Photoshop. So now that we've dealt with most of the dust in Topaz Simplify, we can then go in and deal with these large chunks or scratches using the Photoshop tools. So that is a super fun trick that I have uh, in that I definitely took advantage of <laughs> when I was post-processing all of these images. For example, I scanned in almost, well, over 4,000 slides uh, for this uh, of my grandfather's. And then I had to post-process them. So at that point, <laughs> there wasn't any way I was going to go to do each one individually. And I just built that 0.1 value into an action 
within Photoshop and just batched process with that point one, and it eliminated the majority of the dust within all of these images. And then if I wanted to blow one up and really get very exact, this is the process I would go through. The two tools that I go uh, that I use the most are the clone stamp and the healing brush, or the um, yes, the healing brush for the dust and scratches. The clone stamp, what it does is actually allow you to select an area of your image. So here's my, my brush right now. They're, all of the options are up here, like at the paintbrush. You have your size and the hardness. I'm going to keep it pretty, pretty hard, actually, because otherwise the interior of my brush is the only solid area. And when I'm working with dust, I want to have most of it be solid. So I'm going to get out of that. I'm going to keep my mode normal. I'm going to keep my opacity at 100 percent since I'm trying to cover up dust. I'm going to keep my flow at 100 percent and I am going to select aligned. What aligned means is, well I'll show you what aligned means. And then I'm going to say sample the current layer. So we're going to be sampling from the current layer that we're on over here in our layers palette. So now all I need to do is take my brush and what I'm going to be doing is sampling the pixels from one area and then stamping those pixels onto another area of the image that has the problem. The way that I tell the tool to take it from this particular area is by pressing down the Alt or Option key on my keyboard and you'll see a little bullseye come up on your screen. All you do is you left click your mouse and then you can move that cursor over the piece of dust or whatever you're trying to cover, click, and you can tell right here that it's gone. Okay, it has actually taken the sample from here and moved it up here. Now, one of the, we can do that over here as well in any of these areas, and you can tell here this aligned because it's checked, it's taking the bullseye and keeping it right below my brush where I first clicked. If I did not have the aligned on and I made my, let's say I made my bullseye in this bluish area right here, now wherever I go, it doesn't matter, it's going to take from that bluish area. Whereas, Let's get back to that. Whereas if I keep it aligned, it'll take it from it wherever. It'll stick to it. Okay, but um, let's take a look at this one more time. And I want to show you the problem that might arise with these clone stamps. Sometimes clone stamps are perfect, but you have to be very exact. You want things to look very natural. And at times, you, you'll have what you think are pretty similar pixels, but then you actually see the stamp circle, and that's not good. So when you find yourself in that situation where you can't get the exact um, pixels or get that really natural feel when you're using the tool, we also have the same problem right here in our first stamp. You can kind of see that, that area. We could have taken a little bit more time, but for this particular background with all of these colors, it might be better to use the healing brush. So what the healing brush does is actually blends the two areas together, and it's a smart tool that it, um, it, it thinks for you and says, what is this supposed to be? So I like to use the actual healing brush, not the spot healing brush. And I'm just going to take my hardness down to about, let's say about, 60% or so, mode normal, source is going to be sampled, and I'm going to keep the aligned. And I'm just going to take the bullseye pixels the same way that I did with the clone stamp. I just press down the Alt or Option key, press my left mouse button, then I can come up here and just scroll over it. Now, as you can tell, all that one stroke, it blended it together very nicely, even though I was sampling from this more uh, uh, saturated, a little bit brighter purple area and coming up into this purplish green area, you can't tell the difference. So we can just really go through all of this and have it blend pretty easily and pretty quickly and not have to worry about anything. Okay, so that's how I would deal with the background of this particular image. And as quickly as that, 
my background is pretty much free of dust. Not too bad. Now we come into the foreground of the image and we come into the focus area. Let's look at a before and after of the background though, how quick that was. Here's before, here's after, and now let's take the actual subject, our little puppy here. Here's before and here's after. Now, old pictures and old slides are going to be not as sharp as you want them to begin with. To take it into simplify and at that point soften it up even just a little bit more by taking away the smallest intricate details of that focused area might not be the best solution for that particular image. It might soften it up just a little too much. So I want to show you my other favorite trick of using Simplify with a layer mask and making it a much easier process than using either of these clone stamps or healing brushes because you don't actually have to tell the program where you want to sample from. You're actually sampling from the original image. So what I'm going to do is come over here to my background copy, which I've been working on, and then come up to my layer and say layer mask. And I'm going to reveal Actually, let's see here. Yes, I'm going to reveal all. Okay, now I'm going to come and paint on my focused area, paint back in all of my focused area. So that's going to mean that because my layer mask is white over here, I need to make sure I have a black brush. So I'm going to come over here, just press this little arrow. This little arrow just toggles that black and white, your foreground and background colors back and forth. So I'm just going to make sure black is up front. I'm going to come up to my paintbrush and keep it about, I'm going to take my hardness down actually, my size up. That'll work for now. Okay, I'm going to keep my mode normal, my opacity 100 and my flow 100. And all I'm going to do is paint back in where the focus was in my image. Now, yes, this is actually painting back in all the dust that was in that focused area, but we're going to deal with that very, very, very quickly, much quicker than using clone stamp or the healing brush. Okay, so it's not perfect focus to begin with, and that's why we want to make sure we keep all of the focus that we can. Okay, so you can see over here on the layer mask that I've now painted back in the original image of just the dog. And now the trick is now to come back over to your paint swatches, your foreground background color, and make sure that your foreground color is now white. So my paintbrush is now white. I'm going to take my hardness up just a little bit. And my size is, let's see here can take my size down to about dust size and all I'm going to do is go on top of the pieces of dust and click and they disappear because I'm painting white back on to that black area that I just painted meaning it's now showing the simplify layer above it instead of the original image and this is something that is a very quick, very easy. You don't have to worry about sampling other pixels from the layer. You don't have to worry about sampling the wrong pixels or having to go back because you're sampling from the original tone and the original um, detail of, of that image. So we did that very quickly. And if there's any remnants of detail uh, that needs to be handled, such as this little spot here, we can then go back to our clone stamp or the healing brush and deal with it that way. Let's go back to the healing brush, make sure we're on the right layer, and there we are. So that is how um, my little trick for simplify and dust goes. You can apply the same thing to scratches, which we're going to do in that other image, my family image that I'll be working on here in just a moment. But first I want to go into adjust and show you how quickly you can go in and just really 
brighten up the colors of your image without having to overdo it, make it look unnatural or overprocessed. Some of these, you know, older images, you don't, you want to keep the nostalgic feeling and you don't necessarily want to make them feel like modern day images. So while this particular image isn't the best example, because it is just a cute little puppy, you don't know when it's coming from, I just want to show you how quickly you can ramp up those colors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down my Alt key and or your Option key on your Mac and come up to my Layer tab, go down to Merge Visible and let go of my mouse all while holding down my Alt or Option key. What that does is it gives me a stamp layer. A stamp layer is a layer over here on the right you can see it says that layer one. This layer one is actually a combination of all the layers below it and that's what a stamp layer is called. So now I'm going to take this stamped layer into Topaz Adjust. I'm going to go into Topaz Adjust 5. I'm going to come down here to Reset All. With all of our programs when you take an image in there it's going to apply the last used settings on that, on that um, on that image you bring in. So if you uh, see something you don't like, no worries, you just press reset all and you'll see your original image. And I'm going to use my favorite preset here, one of my favorites. It's called Photo Pop. Here's before, here's after. It's a very subtle preset that works on several different levels, your exposure, your detail, your color, and your noise. And sometimes, here's before, here's after, it might be a little much even. For this particular image, I find it to be a little bit much. And I have a quick solution for that. One of the reasons that it starts to get a little bit grungy in the background and the smooth areas is because in the Details tab, the Process Details independently is unchecked. If you just check that little box, it's as easy as that to smooth out that grunginess that starts to appear in some of the presets within Adjust. Here's before here's after. Okay, now we have before and after. Quickly ramped up the color, have accentuated the detail without um, really making it look unnatural or anything, and, and there you are. And if it's still a little bit too strong, you can come into our finishing touches, open up the transparency slider, and this is exactly like the opacity slider for the layers palette. So you can come in here, take out some of the effect, or all of the effect at 1.0, at zero, the entire effect is shown, and you can just quickly make something that looks good for your image. Again, here's before and after. Let's press OK. That's a little workflow for you. I hope that helps. Now we're going to talk about a couple other things that will occur within um, images, one of which is a color cast that might occur. Let's see here. Here's this image. And let me go down to my original background. Should be the same. It is. Okay. Here's my original background layer. This is an old uh this is also an old slide. The dust wasn't super apparent on this slide. It is there at 100% when you go in. But it's really not too bad. You have some pieces of dust over here, some pieces of dust on the door jam, but nothing like the images we were just dealing with. But what it does have is a bit of a color cast. It is uh, much more red and magenta than it needs to be. And the only reason I personally know that is because I've been in this kitchen so much in my life. <laughs> but also, it's just faded and the color is not really all there and even though we do have some white here in the background it's hard to tell but it does have a magenta cast to it if you're unaware of the surroundings um, what color the surroundings in the particular image is then my suggestion is to make sure you set your white point and your black point correctly and then really focus on skin color and make sure that looks natural and then the other colors should kind of fall into place. So that's something you can look for as well. But the way that I like to handle color casts currently because I found it's pretty easy to do it this way is through Topaz Adjust. We have a great advanced toning area that can work on several different tonal regions in your image. So let's take a look at that. 
I'm just going to make a background copy and come to my filter and go back into Topaz Adjust. Oh, this looks good actually. Here's before and after. This is uh, just that photo pop little bit. If we go to the original photo pop presets a little bit too much, as you can see, it starts to get a little gritty. Here's before, here's after. For my taste, that is. Uh, so all I'm going to do is come into details and say process details independently. Here's before and after. And now I'm ready to work on the color and the color casts. So in the finishing touches tab of Topaz Adjust, we have something called tone. When you open that up, you'll see, let me just reset all here for this particular tab. These little uh, recycle kind of, <laughs> they look like little recycle buttons to me. If you press them, it's a local reset button. It resets only the adjustment tab that you're in. It's much easier than going down and pressing reset all and um, having to start from scratch. So just a little tip. So in the tone area, you'll see four color swatches. To change the color of those color swatches, all you have to do is click on it, and a select color menu will pop up. And then you'll see four color region sliders. Wherever the slider is placed on the region is where that color above it is going to be placed within the image. So here we have black in our lower region at zero. Zero is the uh, lowest part of your tonal range. And then we have a white color at 255, which is going to be the highest point of our tonal range. And then our midtones have this brown and pink. This is our lower midtones with the brown and higher midtones with the pink. If I click my tone palette on or my tone adjustment on, you'll see that applied to the image. Let me put my tone strength a little bit more obvious. Here's before, here's after. So the idea is that you can actually come in and correctively place certain colors or tones within the image to balance out any color cast that might already be in there. For example, I'm going to undo this. I'm going to leave my black in the color one region of zero, so my shadow regions stay nice and dark. I'm going to leave my, well, I'm not necessarily going to leave this white, but let's first tackle the lower midtones. I'm just going to open that up. My lower midtones have a little bit of a reddish uh, magenta tone, so what I'm going to do is just take my um, X here and move my tone to balance that out with a little bit of cyan, a little bit of green mixture here. See if that helps. I'm going to press OK. OK, that's a little too much, but our tone strength is pretty down, so I'm just going to take that up. There we go. Now I'm going to do a similar thing with the mid-tone, or the higher mid-tones. Here we go. Which also have that color cast. So I'm going to come over to maybe about this area, open that up just a bit. Okay, so here's before, here's after. I've definitely balanced it out, but now I have a little bit too much, um, or I don't, I'm not very excited about the colors. Now I want to tell you one other thing in this tone before we get out of this. You can move these color region sliders around to tell the program where exactly on the region you want these colors placed. So to make this really obvious, let's go down here. So if I wanted to have a lot of this lighter mint color, I would open this up like so. Now it's going more towards the white. So it's very fun to play with and actually get to know. So let's take our tone strength back up and just work with that a little bit more. So we've gone from here, this is the without any toning, a little bit of a red magenta cast, to here. This is the more like the actual coloring of the paneling in the kitchen, so we're getting somewhere. But now we need to work on the color because it's still faded and it's still not very bright and exciting. So I'm going to open up my global adjustments and open up my colors 
And the first thing I'm going to do is take my saturation up, take my saturation boost up, take my adaptive saturation, my color regions up. The adaptive saturation works on um, the image in the same way that the adaptive exposure works on your image. It breaks it down into local areas, so it's not looking at your image on a, a whole basis, it's looking at different sections. The color regions works with that slider as well. The regions actually tells how many regions to break your image up to, and then the adaptive saturation just works on those local areas. Here's before, here's after. Let's go back into our finishing touches, add a little bit more of that green tone back in there. And I think we've done a pretty good job. Here's before, the original image, and here's after. Kind of taking that color cast out. You could work on it a little bit more, but that gives you an idea of how to deal with color casts using Topaz Adjust and how you can actually deal with the casts on all different regions within your image. So let's press OK. And the last thing I'm going to go over is, here we are. We're going to take a look at this image. I want to show you how easy it is to get rid of scratches and to actually work on, on something that is as messed up. <laughs> it's the only way to put it, as this image originally was. So let's take a look at that one more time. Here's this before image. And you can tell there's just dust everywhere, just everywhere. So I'm going to go through this entire workflow real quick with you. I'm also going to take a look at the questions right now and see if I can answer any questions as I'm going over this particular image, but we will deal with this spot. I realize that this is something that is seen on a lot of negatives, and I just want to show you how quickly it can be resolved. But I will look at some questions now. Ian says, if given a choice between the negative or the photo, which is the better scan? If you have both the negative and the photo, my personal choice would be to scan the negative. If you scan the negative, you get to work from a more pure option than something that's already been printed on paper and colors or uh, tones have already been represented on a certain type of paper that might be yellowing, it might be uh, not archival and you might have some stains on it, and the negative will probably give you better options. Now if you scan the negative, you are going to have to scan it at a much higher resolution than you would the photo. So it really depends on what type of scanner you have. If you don't have a scanner that can handle scanning a negative and scanning at a very high resolution, then you might not have that option to, to scan in the negative. And let's play with our original background here. Let me show you what we did here. It looks like I stamped down. Let's go back here. There we are. So we're going to disregard these two layers above, and we're just going to start from the beginning. Now I have a couple questions about what the values, again, would be in, in Simplify and about the softening problem. So I want to go over that one more time because this is a great example of sometimes it really doesn't work and you are definitely going to have to paint back in certain areas, but it's just such a faster process than going in and, and working with all the dust individually from the beginning, especially with images like this. This will take you 30 minutes to go through, if, you know, at least, in my, my opinion. There's so much dust. So all you have to do is go to Topaz Labs, Topaz Simplify, Go to one to one so you can see it all. I'm going to press reset all. Let's check out this area right about here. So we're looking at the background and our subjects as well. And let's just take the simplify size up to about 0.1 and see what happens. Okay, so this does really nice things for the background. Here's before, here's after, but we've lost almost all of the detail on, um, on our subjects. Here's before, here's after. The reason being is that in this particular image, is, um, as a, different than the dog, our subjects are smaller, so they are smaller detail, and so it's going to be taking out the highlight in their eyes, uh, the, any sort of detail in the hair, and, and here's before again and after.
So we would have to go in and do a layer mask, but look what it did to the background. It took away the majority of it. It has started to take on a painterly effect, so if you don't like that, you can just come in here and bring it back down until you start to see some texture really um, still there. And I'm pretty happy with that. Again, here's before, here's after, and I'm just going to press OK. So the value for me that I'm, I've been finding works the best is anywhere from 0.06 to 0.15. I find that 0.1 is really, for, for my images and for this set of slides, worked beautifully. Okay, so now that we have this, again, here's before and here's after, all that I would need to do at this point is first deal with the background. So I could come up here and for this particular image I'm going to use, the because there's so much texture and it would take some time with the stamp tool just to, to work with it all, I'm just going to come up here and work with my healing brush, do a little bit of a, I'm going to select where I want my pixels to come from which is going to be directly below my brush and all I have to do to deal with these scratches is go right along the scratches like you see me doing and they are dealt with. So right along here, easily taken away. I'm not going to do all of these because there are quite a few of these bigger ones but you can see immediately how simple it is to use this tool. Okay, I can come over here and do the same thing. Again, I'm not going to be super, super worried about everything, but I just wanted to show you how quickly this can go. Okay, now for this gigantic dot, you might think that it would take a lot of effort, but it really doesn't. All you have to do, I'm just going through the same process here to deal with that edge of the piece of hair or dust, and I'm just going to increase my brush size, I'm going to stay on my healing brush tool and I'm going to go right above it where there's no dust. Okay, and I'm going to get a little bit, oops, I didn't mean to do that. I'm going to get a little bit larger than my piece of dust and I'm just going to get my bullseye from that area and I'm going to come down, cover it up, I'm going to line up with my paneling click once, it's going to think and it's going to process that um, information in there and voila, you went from here to here in one click. And then I would at this point deal with the rest of all of my background but instead I want to show you the next step in the workflow which for then me again we would just be going to layer mask and we'd be revealing all. And we'll just work over here on my aunt and uncle. There we go. So we're revealing all, and all we're going to do is come to our brush, come to the black part, or uh, get the black color, paint out that simplify layer. So we're painting back in the dust, but we're painting back in the detail that we really need for this to stay a photograph not a digital painting. Okay, so as simple as that, but now we have to deal with the dust, which again is much more simple now that we are at, have that simplify layer. All we have to do is go back to the white and take the brush size down and just click. And if it doesn't work, we then go in and deal with, let's look at her face, how quickly this happens. You do want to be careful uh, not to do this right over her eye or right over your subject's eye or anything that might get a little too soft. You want to keep that as much detail as possible. So if you do have dust in the eye, you're going to want to go in and really work with that on a much closer basis than what we're doing here. But the same idea is going to apply. So that was quickly we're quickly able to remove that dust from her face. Alright, let me take a look at some more questions that are coming through. 
Marshall says, can you sharpen the image first to make the scratches, etc., more bold, and then you simplify any advantage to doing that? Marshall, I would actually say that that would be a disadvantage, because if you make the scratches or dust more bold and have them stand out, and you kind of accentuate the edges of that dust or, de or, or scratch, it's going to be that much more um, of a significant detail and what simplify the technology behind simplify it's going to take those weakest smallest details first and then it's going to start taking out um, stronger and larger details as you move that simplify size slider up so what you'll end up probably doing is for example, let me give you an idea. You see this piece of dust on his shirt right here where my cursor is going. Even though I'm clicking on that and I've painted the white back on, it's a bigger scratch and it's a bolder scratch or piece of dust than the rest of these smaller ones which are dealt with very easily just with one click pretty much. Um, so then you're going to have to come back in and use the stamp tool or the healing brush on this particular area. So I, I fear that you would find if you sharpen it first, you're going to have to come back in and use the healing brush or the stamp tool much more than you would otherwise if you just used it. Uh, Glenn says, why did you use the clone stamp rather than the content aware? That's a great question, Glenn. I'm uh, using the clone stamp and the healing brush because it, the content aware is just within CS5 at this point. So anybody who is attending who has Photoshop Elements and uh, earlier versions of Photoshop, which is quite a few people, I, I wanted to show tools that were available to everybody. But Definitely, if you have the availability to use Content Aware Fill, then that is something you should take advantage of because it can work beautifully. Uh, Peter says, how would you handle tears and creases in scanned photos? Peter, I would, after, if there are creases, then the sim Simplify might help with that a little bit to just soften that up and then you could go in and work with the healing brush but when it comes to creases and tears I, I would suggest the healing brush or content aware fill because those are um, the two that are gonna actually either blend together or fill that area in in a smart way as opposed to the clone stamp which will be a little bit more difficult to to uh, work with. However, if you find that the clone stamp is easier, by all means, you can do that. It's just going to take a little bit more time to find that area that will work and be very natural pixel-wise, that sampling area. But I would suggest the healing brush or, or content aware. Let's see here. Theodore says, should you sharpen the photo after you get the dust out? There, that's up to you. Now, a lot of these older images are going to contain some very beautiful natural grain from that, from those materials that were used at the time of the, the image. Some people like to leave it in. I do. I like to leave in uh, the big chunky grain. I don't mind it at all, like on her face. I'm not going to try to flatten this out and denoise it and get all of that because honestly it's just, it's just the materials that were used in it. To me it keeps some of the authentic feel to the image so I'm not trying to produce this image that was shot yesterday. However, because film was, or cameras majority, well, they were all manual at the time of this particular um, time period, and, you know, it might be fuzzier than you might want it. I have found more than sharpening, I have found that in focus for me has worked really well just to get a little bit of the blur out, but sharpening is definitely something that's up to you. Uh, I wouldn't do too much sharpening, but that's try it on your image and if it looks good then heck yeah try it uh, John says for 4,000 slides how much time did you spend on color correction for each uh, John I actually have within the scanning software a correct color option feature so 
while the first hundred or so I didn't use that on, I then, because I, I like to do it myself, I then realized pretty quickly it was going to take way too long. So I used that option at a kind of about a 50% correction. So it really brought back some of the whites, some of the heavy, heavy casts. I was able to get color back quite easily through that option. And then I would go into Topaz Adjust and work with... Um, the color, just popping the colors. Now, uh, with because I was using an action to batch process most of the slide images, I did not individually go in and work with the color unless it needed it. I did look at every single one, and if there was a big color cast, I would go in and, and try to resolve that as best I could on an individual basis. But it took a long time. This was a year project. <laughs> Absolutely a long time. Um, and he also asked, how does Simplify compare to Dust and Scratch Filter in Photoshop? That's a great question. And that's what I was using first before I thought about Topaz Simplify and how um, it was kind of, for me, a better option. Dust and Scratch is a great uh, tool. However, it's softens things up a little bit too much for me and I'm not I don't um, it, it just it, it just softened everything up a little bit too much for me so it has a little bit more of a blurring technique than than simplify simplify just has a different little bit of a technology where it actually recognizes the smaller those very very small details and just extracts them and so when you're at maybe a 0.05 it doesn't even touch the rest of the details it doesn't blur anything it doesn't change the you know the catch light in the eyes like dust and scratches might but dust and scratches is a good tool so it's really up to you um, it, you can use the same type of technique in the sense of putting a layer mask on there painting back in your detail areas or your focal areas and then going back and repainting on that mask the little dots that are the dust that you painted back in. So the same idea of that Photoshop workflow would apply with the dust and scratches filter. Phil says content aware is also in elements 9 and 10. Thanks Phil for everybody. <laughs> Thanks for I actually knew it was in 10. I, I'm sorry I said earlier but I didn't realize it was in 9 so that's good to know. I don't have any rips or tears in my in my um, in any of the examples. I do have a pretty extreme example. I have a couple people asking me to show how to deal with rips and tears. So let's look at this. This image is a pretty extreme example of of some scratches and some residue on the film or on the slide. So. I, I, the same idea for me personally worked. I could use the content aware, which I would probably do, um, but we're not going over that today. So I, here I would use the healing brush. And the same idea of what we were doing earlier would apply for me. What I would do is get on an angle of about, I would get on the angle of the roof. I'd put my bullet point right about there, climb up my angle, make sure I line up and then I would just work with it that way and let it just kind of figure it out on its own and I could clean it up a little bit take my time and, and if this didn't work I could go back and, and, and work with it a little bit more um, but it's as easy as that you don't if it's a scratch that's going through somebody's face or something that's really important to your image it's going to take a lot more time than just me you know casually quickly doing this because you have a lot more detail a lot more intricacy a lot more things to consider so you're just gonna have to be very careful uh, when you're going through the whole process and make sure that it blends nicely and looks correct but definitely take advantage of those tools simplify is not going to be able to help with major uh, tears within the face of of your sub of your image of the um, picture it's going to be much easier to work with your Photoshop or Photoshop Element tools. Okay, everybody, it looks like I got through most of the questions. Thanks, and have a good evening. Bye-bye.